So what if we lived in a world where your department store knew you were pregnant before you told your family and friends? Or perhaps your employer or board of directors knew that you were seeking employment elsewhere before you'd actually decided to do so? Or maybe, what if we lived in a world where your competitors knew exactly what you were working on before you'd filed the patent? Well, guess what? Welcome to today. We live in that future right now. We talk about the coming surveillance state. We live in a surveillance state because we have traded the convenience of many forms of technology for the data that we used to think of as private. So join me in what I call a little digital walk down your digital trail and what it is that people know about you. So many of you left hotels this morning and there were surveillance cameras that caught images of you and pictures. And let me assure you, face recognition technology is quite good at identifying you. Or perhaps you stopped at an ATM machine and got cash. There are more pictures of you. But even if you just walked down the street, your photo was taken tens or even hundreds of times. So lots of people know where you were today. And eerily, they know where you are likely to be tomorrow. Now. Maybe you didn't even leave your house, but I bet most of you used some computational device. So there are people who know other things about you. They know what you do when you read your email. Have you ever opened one of those pretty emails that have lots of graphics and images? Well, once you do that, whoever sent it to you might be tracking you. They might know your hobbies. They might know your political leanings. They probably know what you like. They know what you don't like. They might even know what you eat. They might even know whether you're actually a dog on the internet. But we haven't even scratched the surface there. Let's think about what the company that, whose search engine you use knows about you. Pretty much everything. I don't care whether it's Microsoft or Google or Baidu. They know exactly what you do every day. Are you sick? Have you been surfing the web about flu symptoms or Ebola? Have you been surfing the web about building your own drone? Oh, speaking of drones, given that we live in a surveillance state today, and I hope I've convinced you that we do, why is it that the notion of drones or these flying autonomous vehicles creates such a sense of fear? You are already being watched, so why is this worse? And I'll offer a couple of ideas. First of all, drones move. Now, you might think that you can avoid all the security cameras by simply staying in your house. And maybe that's true. But drones have an ability to actually go places where you don't expect them, like your own backyard. So I think that engenders a little bit of fear. But most of us don't stay in our homes all day, so we're already being watched. What else is it about drones? Drones can carry payload. And we think about happy payloads like Amazon packages arriving on our doorstep. But what about scary payloads like bombs? Drones can move, drones can seek out, drones can destroy. And we know that they have. And if that's not terrifying enough, join me in this little fantastic tale. Imagine tiny flying robots the size of a mosquito that in fact feel like a mosquito when they land on you. And what you thought was a mosquito bite was actually a tiny little robot taking a DNA sample. So forget about the gene sweepers following you around. We can get your DNA without you even noticing. Now, I didn't mean to terrify everyone. I've painted somewhat of a dystopian future. But in fact, the technology that enables all these dystopian topics has actually brought us great benefit. And so there's a trade-off, right? We can send autonomous robots to Mars and get data. We can send robots into Ebola wards to zap germs. So there's a choice. The technology itself is neither good nor bad. The technology is neutral. The question is, how do we use it? Do we use it to clean our homes or to kill people? So we live in a surveillance state today. It's going to get worse if you want to give it a value judgment. It's going to become more pervasive. And the question is, what do we do about it? It is not whether this will happen, right? It already has happened. Lots of organizations have a lot more information about you than you'd care to think. 
So privacy as we know it or knew it in the past is really no longer feasible. So rather than saying, what if we lived in this world? The question we need to ask is, what now? <laughs> 